Mississippi River from Natchez to New Orleans, mansions stretched like a long strand of pearls. But plantation life wasn't all magnolias and mint juleps. I think it's been glamorized too much. I don't think being a plantation owner was necessarily uh, the happiest, most satisfying life one could have. I think we've misled too often by the, the structure. The beautiful, well-maintained and restored old plantations have an aura about them, a glamour about them, a history about them that people look at it and say, oh boy, it must have been wonderful to have lived in those days. I don't think it was so wonderful. I really don't. Uh, they left a rich legacy of architecture, but also uh, were major players in uh, America's greatest ugliness, and that's uh, slavery. The slaves are seated on benches arranged like an amphitheater. In order to give them a better appearance, the merchants keep them quite clean when they are exhibited to the buyers. The latter come and choose the slaves who will fill their needs. By 1850, New Orleans was the nation's largest slave trading center, with some 300 dealers. The Masonic Temple, the St. Louis Hotel, the Exchange at Esplanade Avenue, all regularly auctioned human beings like livestock. Within a half mile of the St. Charles Hotel alone, there were 25 slave depots. The slave markets were often the scene of unspeakable human misery. Never have I seen such an exhibition of intense, unmeasured, and unbounded grief as when Eliza was parted from her child. Oh, how piteously then did she beseech and beg and pray that they might not be separated? Why could they not be purchased together? If you were sold in New Orleans, the chances that you would stay here were not very, very good. So slaves in Kentucky, uh, Missouri, along the Mississippi River dreaded the prospect of being sold to New Orleans. They dread that you're gonna be sold a long, long ways from your loved ones with no chance that you're gonna ever get back. And that basically would have meant being sold down the river to New Orleans. Even from within the walls of their grand mansions, some slave owners couldn't hide from the horrors that had made them rich. I am a slaveholder myself. Yet you must not think that I approve of that inhumane commerce. No, I assure you there is no man on earth that can see it in a more horrid light than myself. Slavery barbarized the whole society. Slaveholders were brutal in their treatment toward slaves. Blacks were brutal in their relationship toward each other. Whites were brutal toward each other. You got used to seeing people mistreated and uh, it didn't affect you as much as people would have seen it for the first time from the outside. Slavery is based within violence. Slavery doesn't work without violence. It doesn't work without slaves being kept in their place by being, having their lives threatened, their children threatened, their, their relations between husbands and wives, mothers and children being severed. America had long been haunted by the specter of slavery. Finding excuses for it was getting harder. By the middle of the 19th century, the political compromises and concessions that had held the country together were strained to the limit. The differences between the northern and southern states were rooted in deep cultural and political differences. But in the end, what mattered most was money. The slave owners were never better off. The price of slaves uh, increased by 70% between 1850 and 1860, which is an indication of what was happening to the profits from owning slaves. Without the institution of slavery, the great staple products of the South would cease to be grown, and the immense annual results, which are distributed among every class of the community, would cease. One thing I think it's important to realize is how much money people had tied up uh, in slave capital. Uh, throughout the South, it was about $5 billion, but if you talk about an individual, 
For example, a prime slave, say male age 25, uh, worth, say, $1,500 in 1850 or 1855, this would translate to about $35,000 today. So a person owning even one slave, this was a large investment, but a person owning 100 on a plantation or a large number of slaves, this was a tremendous capital investment, even worth more than the land uh, that supported uh, them. The land was not as expensive as the slaves themselves. No one has ever given up that much money without some kind of a fight. In Louisiana, that fight began the day